What's up guys, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go. Now we've been doing a ton of cinema lens tests on this channel recently and some of you might not understand why this matters or how you decide between a lens when you're looking at these tests. So today I'm going to show you guys how to use this information in all these lens tests that I'm putting out and decide on what lens to use for your next project. First let's talk about why it matters and why this is important to choose the right lens. Just like anything else you decide on in filmmaking, it can have an effect on the image, whether that's deciding on what camera you want to use who the talent's gonna be, your art direction, your color grading, your props, your location, all of those things can have an effect on your viewer and it's no different when deciding on what lens to choose. Obviously some of the differences can be a little more subtle in lenses, but they're still there. And all of these little parts, they come together to build this final image and convey a specific mood or feeling to your project. For an obvious example, say you're trying to shoot a sci-fi film. Having a lens that flares and streaks like that of an anamorphic can lend to that more futuristic or out of this world type feeling. Where a vintage lens that has some more character that might not be as sharp might lend itself more to an old timey or period piece. On the other hand, you could get a super clean, tack sharp modern lens, which is great to feel most lifelike and close to reality. Now those are some quick examples of how you can use these lenses. Obviously you can use them however you want and for whatever type of project you want, but those are some of the stereotypes out there for these lenses, but it really depends on however you wanna use it. Now I'm gonna go through some of the optical things that we look at when we're testing lenses to help us decide on what characteristics we like and wanna use in our project. The first thing that we're gonna look at is distortion and focal length. Both of these things kind of go hand in hand, wider lenses having a little more distortion, longer lenses being more compressed. I'm not gonna go too much into detail on this one because that can be a whole other video, how focal lengths and distortion can affect the perceived look or what you're looking at and how you're looking at it. Next is flaring or lack of flares. Flares are probably one of the most noticeable things about lenses and easiest way to tell them apart. And they can be really cool, but if they're not used right or it's the wrong type of flare for the type of project that you're doing, it can really pull your viewer out of the scene. Also, different lenses have different elements and different lens coatings that can affect the flares, either reducing them or exaggerating them. And it's definitely a must to check out all of your options because this is the most noticeable thing about a lens but it can be tricky to test all of those on your own, and that's why we're doing all of these lens tests so you can check them out and compare them side by side without needing to get your hands on the lens. After that, I like to look at bokeh, and there's mainly two types, spherical and anamorphic, but there's also a third one which is custom bokeh. You can do this by taking a cardstock and cutting out a shape, and then the light will come through that, make that shape of the bokeh. I'll try to find a video and leave a link in the description showing how to do that if you wanna learn more about it. But back to the main two, spherical and anamorphic. Anamorphic is more related to cinema and bigger movies, so having an anamorphic lens and having anamorphic bokeh, which is more oval shaped, can lend to that cinematic look, which is really good for narrative or storytelling type pieces. Where spherical lenses is what most people are used to seeing, so it can feel a little more natural, and it's also a lot easier to find spherical lenses if you have to jump between different sets. After bokeh, the next thing that I look at is sharpness. Now obviously you want your lens to be as sharp as possible, but if you're using an older lens or a vintage lens, having some softness in the image and some inconsistencies can really add to that unique look and give you that older feel. If a lens is too sharp and too clinical, you might not be getting the feel you want for your project. That's not to say that a lens that's super clean and really sharp doesn't have its place. If you're shooting something that's more modern or corporate, you'll definitely wanna have that cleaner look. The last thing that I like to look at, which is part optical, part mechanical, is the parfocality of a lens. If you're doing any sort of documentary or run and gun, this is definitely something you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your lens has. This means that if you're zooming in and out, your focus isn't gonna shift, so you're not gonna to have to refocus as you're zooming the lens, which can be a little bit tricky, especially if you're only a one-man band. Now, besides the creative side and looking at the optics and how it makes the image look, you're also gonna look at the technical side when you're deciding on a lens. One of the things to look at is, is the lens in a matching set? Having a matching set of lenses makes things so much faster on set, being able to swap out your lens and not have to readjust your matte box or your follow focus, or if you're using it on a gimbal, you're gonna be able to swap those out without really having to do any rebalance, which can save you a ton of time, and that means money on set. The next thing is aperture and aperture blades. Having a faster aperture means that you can have bigger bokeh, you can have more shallow depth of field, which is great for that cinematic type look. But you might not need that, so you could get away with getting a lens that's a T3 or a T4. And for the aperture blades, this kind of goes back to the optics. 
if you have more blades in there, you're gonna have smoother, rounder bokeh. With less blades in a lens, like six or eight, you're gonna get a hexagon or octagon shaped bokeh. Where if you have a higher number, like 18, you're gonna get much more circular bokeh. Next is the physical size of this lens. Is it really long? Is it short? Are you gonna be able to fit it on a gimbal? Is it gonna work for setting up a shoulder rig? and having a follow focus. Those are all really important things to consider when you're deciding on what lens to choose. Going along with that is also the weight of the lens. Is it gonna to be too front heavy for it to go on a gimbal? Do you need to get a lighter lens? Are you gonna be able to shift it back far enough? There's a lot of things about just the physical dimensions and size of it that are gonna be really important to know so you can troubleshoot anything before you get on set. And the last thing that I think is really important when you're looking into a lens is the minimum focus distance. If you're looking at a lot of the anamorphics, they have a four or five, sometimes even six foot minimum focus distance, which can be really hard to get any close up. So if you're trying to do product or be able to shoot any sort of small objects, it's gonna be really hard to get with some of those anamorphic lenses. So looking at those minimum focus distances of all the lenses is definitely a must. Now, all of those things that I talked about, you don't need to see in a special video. You can find most of them on the product pages on either our website or on the manufacturer's website of each of those lenses. But to get the more creative side, that's where all of these tests come in and that's why I'm doing them all for you so you can make some educated decisions on what lenses to use on your next shoot. Hope you guys got something out of this video. If you did and you enjoyed this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe for new videos every week, and I'll see you in the next one.